Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have something very special for you. Paul here from Proc Technologies has flown down here to help me out demonstrate the flow tracks, which is the most complex out of all the Proc products, and I was really afraid to mess this one up. So he was more than overjoyed to come on down and help us out. And we're gonna go over all the specs, all the details, show you how to set it up, how to run it, and then how to clean it, because you can clean it. So let's start right out. This is the flow tracks. It is a infusion pump. It's a manometer, it's a pressure meter, it's a temperature, and it's a stopwatch. That's four different things in one little product. It's battery operated, two AA batteries. Correct. And what's the runtime on it? I believe it's about eight to 10 hours. Eight to 10 hours. That's absolutely insane. So it's got eight to 10 hours. It has an embedded accelerometer so it knows if it's tilted, it knows it's positioning. That's absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and let's get a look at the pressures because it is a pressure meter. So this unit has several different units of measurement for pressure automatically built in and you can cycle through all of them with the button right there. The display is vibrant. It's light on dark background. You can see it from across the room. So let's say that we want to use this guy as a manometer. Well, uh, we could do that without the unit being primed and to help us out, we can use the lure lock fitting that comes equipped with the device. Then you attach any hose that you use throughout the hospital for air or gas. You occlude the unit. And then once you have vacuum or you have pressure, your pressure will show up here and you'll be able to do your measurements with whatever unit of measurement you choose to, to use. And of course you zero the pressure before you uh, Absolutely. start to use it because right now it's registering, registering yep. 0.01 PSA. Yep. So yep. again we'll uh, uh, unocclude it, zero the pressure, to, so it's zero to atmospheric, Right. and then occlude it, Yep. attach your hose, Okay. and, and then you'll have your vacuum or your pressure. Right. Wow, so I bet you, especially since you're dealing with like 30 PSI plus, guys that work on sterilizers could really utilize this because you're dealing with, what, 30 millimeters of vacuum plus you can be dealing with uh, 30 PSI, positive pressure. Yes. It's really tough on most uh, manometers. That's excellent. So that's the pressure gauge feature. You also have a temperature gauge, which is with this little adapter right here. and. You plug it into the side port, and then what type of temperature probe can plug into this device? Any kind of YSI 400 temperature probe. Okay. So this guy, it measures temperature, simulates temperature? It measures temperature. Okay. So Once you measures. have the probe attached, you put the probe into whatever you want to measure the temperature of. Okay. And the, the parameters are negative 28.9 to a positive 115 degrees C. Holy cow. And what's the range on the pressure? Because this guy is unlike any pressure gauge that I have currently in my inventory. So what about this one? In PSI, it goes from negative 12.5 PSI to a positive 75 PSI. Holy cow, so that's line pressure and that's maximum vacuum that you can probably ever reach with a traditional vacuum pump. So you could actually use this to test line pressure, like plug it right into your wall. If the customers are saying, they don't believe the gauges or they don't, they're not getting enough pressure to any device, you can literally come up with an adapter, plug it into this guy, and see up to many, many PSI. Now mind you guys that uh, one of the highest things that we test for pressure is going to be your pneumatic tourniquets and those usually go up to about 700, 750 millimeters of mercury, which is only 16 PSI. This guy goes to an insane level, plus you can check temperatures, that's amazing. So let's get right into its meat and potatoes. This guy is a uh, flow meter. So it does flow, it does volume, and it also does occlusion pressure. Correct. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. So let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, notice the first thing that we're going to tell you guys is it does have a sensor that detects when it's tilted. So when you go to set it up, you got to make sure that it's as level as possible. It will tell you when you're messing up. <laughs> And we also have it mounted at approximately the same height as the infusion pump itself. Now, mind you, all these instructions, there's a cute little cue card that we have here that goes over all this. 
but always check with your manufacturer's suggested uh, settings and your height and also your output height. We'll get to that more later, but check with your manufacturer on how to set up for doing a proper calibration. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go over some of the things we got in the box. First off, we got the output tubing, the output right? Output tubing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have here a pressure testing lure connector, and this is for when you're checking line pressure and stuff, right? That's right, when okay. you're checking air and gas pressure or right. vacuum. So this is something that I was a little confused about when I first seen it. It said filter screen replacements. We'll go over that later when we get to the cleaning section. This is a major difference from other flow meters, all right? So we'll go over that later. We have a flush bottle, again, for cleaning. We have software, a software suite. Yes. Okay. It gives you instructions on how to prime it and how to use it with different pumps. Oh, wow. Okay. Save the CD. Trust me. <laughs> it also has a very in-depth operator's guide. Although this one's for a SIM cube. So <laughs> I, read the, I read the guide and it was very in-depth. It's like you guys actually had a real engineer right here, yes. user guide. That's fantastic. We have a cleaning brush. We'll get to that later, guys. Trust me. We've got uh, Flowtrax cleaning solution. So this is uh, basically uh, unscented Windex, but uh, this comes right with the unit when you buy it. And also we have an AC adapter. Although with a 10 hour runtime, I can't fathom why you would run it off the adapter. Maybe at a bench? Yes. I, okay, yes. maybe at a bench. But uh, this guy here, is in the pronk backpack and it lives there because I never use it. It's always on batteries. All right, let's go ahead and set it up. Let's show how to do a prime and uh, also the we'll set up the input and output height so that you guys can see how long it takes because it really doesn't take that long at all. On the same side where the temperature meter goes in, you have a, a little output right here is where the output hose will go. Excellent. You just slide it on there if I can get that done. I'm right handed and I'm using my left hand. So <laughs> and that stand is quite wobbly. Yep. Okay. Now it's always important to know that when you're doing an infusion, you always want the output hose to go up. Okay. Somewhere between 6 and 14 inches. Okay. Uh, you don't want it to go down because if it goes down, that creates a vacuum or a suction effect, and it can create, and it will affect the volume levels. Okay, and so it it'll can, naturally siphon. It will actually siphon. Okay, that's very good to know. I bet you people will have that problem if they don't follow the instructions. Okay, and as far as the input that just connects over there to the lure to connector. To the lure connector from your IV set, just connect right on here to the input, and just twist on. Okay, excellent. All right, and so, it tells you right on the screen. I know on my phone here it shows that it's flickering, but that, remind you guys, is the refresh rate of the LCD panel and the camera. So it's actually very crisp, very clear, and I don't know if there's any way that I could demonstrate that because this is just a phone camera. But anyway, notice that it says prime required on there. So in order to get the numerics, you have to prime it, and that is the number one thing that we have to show you guys, all right? Oh, volume to be... Okay, so we so have we'll to just go ahead and do 12. Okay. Okay, so before we start it, again, we want to hit reset flow, which is going to set everything back to zero. Okay. And I'm just, just going to hit uh, pressure to zero as well and reset flow. And so we're going to start the pump. It's always very, very important when you hook up your IV set that you make sure it is totally primed that there are no air bubbles between the bag going into the pump and into the uh, flow tracks at this point. So right now, it looks like we've probably got all the air bubbles out. And the reason that we've set it up at such a high rate of 800 milliliters an hour is we want to make sure that we get all the micro bubbles that might be caught somewhere in this fluid path. So you can see now, the pump identifies the bubbles and it follows them through the path. Yes, our sensors are actually on that green carriage that you see going up and down, and it's powered by a, a stamper motor that has 1,000 steps. So in reality, we're actually tracking the bubble once we've created the bubble and making our measurements following the bubble and the liquid in real time. That's what sets us apart from any other automated analyzer in the marketplace. 
Now again, to, to, we've got fluid going through there and we're quite certain that we've got all the bubbles out. So I'm going to hit the function button here. And I'm going to hit flush. Now when Flowtrax receives fluid, it wants to create a bubble. And we don't want it to create a bubble right now. We want to make sure we've got all the air out of the system. So okay. we'll leave it in that flush function for a second or two. You can see the bubbles migrate out of the tube. And as the bubbles are migrating out of the tube, and once we've seen that we're, we're confident we've got all the bubbles out, then I'm going to hit the exit button right here. Okay. And then you'll see that we'll, we will create a bubble down there. And we'll there start to track it. Yep, there it is. And it'll fall, make its way up to the top of the tube, down the other side, and it'll do a little dance. There it goes. And then it's going to follow the bubble down to the bottom. It'll release it. Okay, it goes up to the top. Now it's on its way down. That's the little dance. And it released it. And it'll grab it again, and yep. then you'll have numbers up here telling you that it, you're primed. That is amazing that the steps are so precise. It, it grabs the bubble and then lets it go. Yes. Now we can go ahead and stop the pump, if you will. Okay. We have rate, and you'll have another message down below that says press reset flow. Okay. So once I press reset flow, we'll have zeros both there, and flow tracks is totally primed. Okay. All right, guys. In case you thought that the previous method for priming the device is a little bit too complex, there's a much simpler method, especially if you're a field technician. The unit comes with this large 60 milliliter BD syringe, and you can actually prime the unit with the syringe. That's amazing. Okay, let's see how you do it. Now, as we mentioned before, when we primed it using the IV pump, no matter what IV pump it is, we wanted you to use a very high volume and rate. Uh, 800 to 900 milliliters an hour so we can get all the micro bubbles out of there. Obviously, if you're using a PCA pump or a feeding pump, a lot of times they can't generate that much volume. So you can use this device on all types of infusion pumps? All types of infusion okay. pumps. Feeding pumps, syringe pumps, PCA pumps, and high volume pumps. And we render a 1% reading on any volume from a half a milliliter an hour to a thousand milliliters an hour. Okay, interesting. Because I was wondering how you were going to get 800 milliliters with a, a syringe pump. But, yeah, so, right. so if you're out in the field or if you've done this a few times, I find that the easiest way to prime it is using the syringe. So you just hook the syringe up with the distilled water Okay. and we'll follow the same process. We will hit the function button and we'll hit the flush button. Okay. Again, once flow track starts to receive fluid, it wants to create a bubble. I don't want it to right now in this process. We just want to make sure we're getting all of the fluid and all of the air out. So I'm going to start pushing, and as you'll see up here, we're getting some fluid coming through, and there's some bubbles in the line as well. Okay. Yep, and I can see. And once see. I'm sure that I'm not seeing any more bubbles come through, now again, we want to generate, if we can, somewhere between 700 and 900 milliliters an hour of, of flow or rate. And uh, you're not going to be able to do that until you've had some practice at it. Now, saying 700 to 900 milliliters an hour is, uh, you're thinking that's big pressure, but it's really not. Okay. I call it one thumb and one finger. So now that I'm sure I've got all the air out of the system, I'm going to follow the same process as priming it with the IV pump. And I'm going to, while I'm still continuing to push, I'm going to hit exit. And you'll see over here, we're going to go through the same process. Okay. We just created a bubble. Yep, I can see that it's going up and down. There it goes. Yep. There it goes. There we go. Yep. I was pushing too hard. Okay. So if it if it And you'll see that I've got volume up here of six ninety eight seven hundred. And it says to reset flow, so I'm gonna stop pushing. Okay. And I'm gonna hit reset flow. Now the way to get adept at using the syringe instead of using the IV pump is you need to get it primed one time, maybe with the IV pump, so you so you are primed. Okay. And then what you can do is you can just hit reset flow, go back to zero, and then you can practice pushing. So again, you want to get to between 700 and 900 milliliters an hour is ideal for priming. 
And so once it's primed, you can do that and practice. And you know, if you get it right there, 750, it's gonna be absolutely wonderful to get it primed. And then you can hit reset flow, get back to zero and try it again. So you, so you get the feel of what, the, how much pressure you need to put on the uh, syringe to get, get it to prime. I imagine once you get really used to this, I, it can go quite quickly. It really does go very quickly. Okay, especially with the syringe, because setting up the set and everything. Absolutely. Okay. And especially with the BD Alaris pumps, because if you're hooked up to the, B, the software system, it won't allow you to go up to 700 or 900 milliliters an hour. It's set at 500. Yep, that's right. So you can also use it just uh, if you want to use gravity flow, just from the IV set down to the flow track itself and just use let gravity do it. You can do it that way. You can just raise the height of it up so you make sure you've got that flow and you can prime it that way as well. Oh, excellent. So uh, now it's probably fairly safe to put the side cover back on. Yes. I just took that off for... We, for... Can, we can leave it off, but it's okay. important to know that if you're next to sunlight, you want to have the cover on. Got you, because, because they're optical it, sensors. Because the optical sensors and the, the infrared light portion of it, it'll, it'll screw that up. So for our purposes right now, we can leave it on so people can go ahead and watch it. Okay. Once flow tracks is prime, the bubble will never leave that right tube. It'll just go up and down, but the flu the fluid rate will be uh, calculated very precisely. Excellent. Okay, so let's test an infusion. Okay. Before we do that, one more step. Okay. Uh, once you have it primed, what I would like every to remember to do, you only need to do this one time when it's primed, is unhook. The, infu the IV set. Okay. Because what we want to do is we want to zero the pressure gauge in here. Ah, okay. And we want to do it to atmospheric pressure. Right. And so up here at the top button, it's a zero pressure. And so I'm going to push that once or twice, and we're going to zero the pressure. Okay. And if you'll notice, we've there got, it goes. We, we're on PSI, and we've got two pressures. We've got max pressure and real time pressure. So just for grins, I'm going to push it one more time, and I'm going to zero that. And now I'm going to hook the uh, IV set back up. Now, every time, from this point forward, every time we hit reset flow, we're resetting everything to the original settings. Okay. So we're resetting the pressure meter zero. and everything else. But we wanted to make sure that we set it to zero to atmospheric pressure. Okay. Excellent. So I just hit reset flow. Now, to do a test with the Alaris pumps, obviously if you're using Alaris pumps, you're probably using their ASM software system, and everything is set by the software system. Okay. We're not using the software system, but we do know that their values are 500 milliliters an hour with the volume to be infused of 12 okay. milliliters. So one of the things I want to point out to everyone is that the bag of what's being measured has to be a very particular height above the infusion device, and it's different based on the various manufacturers. So we have to look up in the user manual for your infusion device and see how high does it have to be. And as the bag goes down, as you use it throughout the day, you might have to keep maintaining the fluid level to a very particular height. So if you start seeing errors, or deviation from accuracy it's also going to be the quantity of water that's in your bag all right so let's go ahead and set up the pump so if you'll get a picture up here at the top sure. of flow tracks it says that you're to use distilled water only that's right we want distilled water or deionized water okay anything else can contaminate the inner workings and uh, we don't want that to happen so that would be the, the glass and the sensor and all that. It's, and the, yes, right. that's right. The valves and the pumps and everything that are in there. But if you use distilled water or deionized water, we're in good shape. With the Alaris, the BD pumps, the height of the water should be 20 inches plus or minus one inch from the top of the water to the top of the pump. And so you don't want to deviate out of that because if you do, you're introducing a 1% error, and that's taking away a lot of your accuracy. For that's 1% per, per inch, right? It's, well, every 10 inches that you're out of that spec, okay. it's a 1% error. Okay, that could be quite a bit. Yes. All right. We are going to do a basic infusion. and 500 milliliters. Okay. All right. And we enter. Volume to be infused of 12. Okay, excellent. 
12 milliliters. All right, let's run it. Let's see. All right, so it's always important before you run any test, you always want to make sure that you hit reset flow. Set everything back to zero. Okay, very good to know. And you'll want to start the pump. Okay. Yep. There you go. And if you'll notice, we're starting to get numbers already. Okay, and you can see it tracking the bubble. I might mention here that I don't believe any manufacturer really cares about the flow or the rate. They're really always interested in the volume. Right. But in our case, and in any case, no matter what type of IV pump you're using, the, the uh, measurement's still the same. It's plus or minus 5%. So into this test, just a, a, a few milliliters, you'll be able to see that we're doing tracking at 490, 491 which is well within the 5% range. Right. So you're going to have a good idea that this pump will pass because we're, we're passing the rate or the flow. It's actually very quiet too, this little analyzer. I'm going to hit reset flow, and if you'll notice that the carriage will come to rest yep. at the bottom. Sure did. We don't want it there. So I'm going to hit function, clean glass, and then the, evacuate all the water out of the system and the carriage stops halfway up. Then what we do is we grab the glass tubes up here at the top. There's a little notch. Yep. We grab it and pull it out. Wow. So that's all it is. It just presses in with... There's two O-rings I see at the there's base? There's two O-rings at the base. Okay. And they fit very snugly and nicely into the two little circles down there at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Okay. Take the nice handy brush that we've given you. Okay. You dip it in what we call the magic solution, and as was mentioned earlier, it's nothing more than Windex. And you go in and out each tube very briskly. Well, I say briskly, but it's not happening. It's a very tight fit, and right. we want it tight because we want to make sure, even though you're using distilled water or deionized de water, there could be some drying and drying and some build up there. We want to make sure that we get everything off of there. We want you to do it in both tubes. And I usually try to rotate the, the glass tube as I'm doing it, just to make sure that we get it done very good. Oops. So that one's on top of the other, and then I just squirt the distilled water into the tube so I got a good flow, and then I turn it upside down the other way. So I've got a good flow. We want to make sure we get all of the Windex out of the glass tubes. Okay. And it's also very important that you make sure that you have get all of the fluid, any fluid or anything off the outside of the glass tubes. Okay. Because the sensors will see any kind of particulates or anything on there and think it might be a bubble or air and it might screw it up a little bit. Okay, since they're optical sensors, every yeah. little bit is that's going right. to affect it. Once that's done, you'll take the glass tubes and you'll seat it down in the bottom of the flow tracks and then push it in. Okay, so it just snaps in, there's no latch, no nothing? It just snaps in, there's no latch. So once it's in the bottom, the two, the two round portions in the bottom, it just snaps in. Okay. Once you've done that, that, cleaning the glass tubes might take you a minute and a half to two minutes, um, but it's a very short period of time to ensure that you're going to have uh, accurate readings okay. in the future. So we've, we've, again, we've designed flow tracks so that you can work on it in the field. We want you to work on it in the field. Uh, we would like you to probably clean the glass tubes every two to three weeks if it's being in use. Okay. If you use flow tracks for a period of time and then put it away, again, before you use it the first time, we want you to clean the glass tube just to make sure. Okay. And another thing that we've done, as was mentioned earlier. And I, I did talk about uh, the filters, too. Yes, the filter. Okay. We have a filter, a little mesh filter, inside the lure attachment here. You just unscrew that. And I don't know if you can see there, but we have oh, yeah. a little mesh filter in there. Okay. We've provided you with one inside the lure itself and two extra ones. So we want you to clean that filter, oh, probably every three months, every two to three months. And what you would do to clean that filter, I'd take a, a round, blunt instrument. Okay. And push it in the front side here and just push the filter out. Okay. And then save that filter and then put in a new filter, just push it in there using that blend instrument and then you're ready to go. It's very easy to check if you look up 
And you might not be able to see it here, but if you look up at the light, you'll be able to see whether the filter is clean or dirty. Let's see. Oh, there I caught it. Yeah. Okay, so it's a little screen mesh. A little bit. Correct. So if if you are, uh, you know, because biomeds don't necessarily always take care of their equipment. So if you find one of these in your equipment calibration cabinet, and for some weird reason it's it's being a little difficult, right. you have to inspect the whole thing, clean it, and if anything, uh, if you're a field tech, you should have extra filters, extra glass. I mean, they're not that expensive. And we provide you with them when you when you when you first get the unit. We provide you with extras. Now it's very important. Generally speaking, biomeds uh, are kind of like men with their cars. All biomeds are. You, a man can get in his car, and if it's not functioning properly, he can tell by the sound. He can tell by what's going on. You'll be able to do the same thing with your test equipment with flow tracks here. If you find after you're using it for a while that the readings just aren't where they should be, they're consistently low and they're just not right, the first thing that I would do would be clean the glass tubes and check the filter. Okay. Because chances are that's what's going to be the cause of your problem. Excellent. So that, guys, that is a complete overview of the flow tracks. There is no way that I could have been this thorough if I wanted to do this on my own. So that's the flow tracks. That's all the attachments. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. If it was, if I was a tech, I would definitely have this in its own little box because there's a lot of little pieces that can get lost. But uh, you can clean it. You can maintenance it yourself. Correct. So what about uh, sending out for calibration? You guys calibrate these yourself? We do calibrate. Okay. Uh, we will let you use any of your calibration companies if you use your own. Especially a lot of biomeds like to do that because they come on site and they're without the equipment. Uh, if, if that company does not have the instructions on how to do the uh, calibration, we will be happily send it to them. Uh, however, if you do send them in to us, we will have your unit somewhere between five and seven business days. Okay and we'll return it. Uh, one of the things that we offer when you send it in to us is we will go through it, we will check all the tubing, we will check uh, the pumps, we will check the valves and everything else, and if something needs to be refurbished, we just refurbish it as part of the calibration. Oh wow. And if okay. there are any software upgrades as well, we'll all actually include that as well. Now you won't get that if you use your own calibration company, but uh, it's you know give and take, you give up something to get something. Right. Uh, but uh, like I said, five to seven business days to send it in for calibration. And if you do need a loaner while that's done, uh, feel free to call us. And if we have one available, we'll send you a loaner so you, you're not out of work. Okay. Excellent. Well, guys, that is a complete overview and function of the flow tracks. And that is pretty much as thorough as I, I believe I could possibly be on it. Paul. Well, Thank, Thank you, you very much. Very much. It's been a pleasure. What an excellent, excellent video, guys. The flow tracks is a portable pressure meter, stopwatch, flow gauge, pressure gauge. It does a little bit of everything, and it runs off two double A's. What more can you ask for? And it's available as standard equipment inside the Pronk backpack. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Paul, thank you so much again for coming out, and guys. Contact Pronk if you need a flow meter because this little guy is quite the little piece of tech. Thanks for watching. Thank you.